Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We have Mike, Momo, and Rachel here with us. Welcome back to episode three on our conversation on giving and sharing, what the difference is between them. Last episode, we spoke about sometimes giving can often be taking. Momo, who was the villain of our last episode, shared how he overgave in four, four days a week to the new person, but really he was taking and looking for admiration. So that giving was really taking. We spoke about Rachel, who was sharing, who genuinely saw an opportunity to include someone into their group, didn't necessarily overgive and say, here, let me be your hero, it was her opportunity to shine her light, which ended up being a completely different experience. And Mike, as well. If you didn't get a chance to listen to episode two on the difference between giving and sharing, we would strongly suggest going back and re-watching it. In this episode, we're going to be giving tools to be able to distinguish whether we're actually giving, which is sometimes taking, or sharing. And we're also going to be starting with some boundaries and learning how saying no, which is technically the opposite of giving, how saying no can sometimes be sharing, how setting up a boundary can sometimes allow the opportunity for someone else to step up to the occasion. Whereas if you just continue to give and share, it would end up being um, difficult for them, difficult for them that you are giving and, and being their light. So any examples on that where saying no actually was, was sharing? Um, yeah. Oh, well, please. You go first this time. <laughs> Finally, not me. <laughs> um, so recently I had a, so I have a colleague who makes it our whole process in our work environment a bit harder in a sense, just a bit more inefficient. And um, my colleague doesn't take responsibility for what, you know, what he's doing, making the process slower, more inefficient, etc. So I decided it was like enough and I, and in a, in a respectful way, but I was like, this is not okay. Like this will not work. Just really, really, it was hitting a boundary and it was making everyone's lives so much harder. It was, somebody had to set up, a few of us did, but, um, but it I was just, hitting a boundary or was crossing a boundary? All right. Thank you. It was crossing okay. a boundary. Clearly. Thank okay. you so much. Um, and it wasn't okay. And I said, you know, this isn't going to work for the future. These things need to change. Um, and really just saying no because it was crossing a boundary and it was like you had what to was she no. doing um just crossing. was really just lacking lacking it wasn't taking his job serious enough and it wasn't doing it well and therefore it you know put more stress and more work on the rest of us so it's really difficult so that's really powerful because a lot of times when you have a friend let's say i'm going to use you had a co-worker's example mm -hmm. but let's say you have a friend that's doing something wrong and nobody's really holding them accountable, sometimes going up to them and saying, it was love. And like you said, yeah. with respect, Rachel, like going up to them and saying, this is not okay, right? Waking somebody up out of their funk before they continue to live down this process the whole way, you're really sharing with them because if nobody is going to tell them that what they're doing is wrong, they don't have the opportunity to see and change. But you could say, like, I'm sharing, I'm giving with them, I'm letting them to continue their life, I'm not going to be the one to do this, we can easily move and shift responsibility to other people in their life. But if you, if you really care for someone, sometimes setting a boundary and saying what you're doing is not okay, is really giving them and sharing with them the opportunity to become different versions of themselves and often, you know, really shows them that you that you care about your job and also about about them. Um, I was actually speaking to someone yesterday um, and the person was going through a really, really hard time, but everybody was really just letting that person slip. And it was really painful. Was a, a younger person and he, because nobody stepped up and said, no, he believed that nobody really cared about him and nobody really loves him because the whole world is just letting him fall off the planet. And for me yesterday, I went up to this person. I said, what are you doing? Like, this is, this is not okay. Someone has to hold you accountable. You're slipping. And, and it might have sound, it might have sounded intense and hard and painful, but in a way I was trying to set a boundary and saying, at least I'm holding you accountable. I care about you enough to not allow you to slip in this way. Many people can be like, wait, what are you doing? Like he's in a tough space. You know, you should have mercy on him. But nobody said, I care about you enough to wake you up. And I think that's, Rachel, that's a powerful example of where sharing no is really sharing 
an opportunity for someone to become a better version of themselves. Really powerful. Especially because any, any other story? If it, if it like goes too far in, in uh, Rachel's example, uh, that person could end up fired, right? So like if you just all hands off, let them do their thing, you're literally just letting them walk down to their demise, like, you know, lose their job. So it's very powerful to say no. But yes, I do have an example <laughs> of when not saying no becomes an issue. So when I first moved here to LA, I had a roommate who growing up, he always had like his moms and sisters to like take care of the house, to do all the chores, et cetera. Like nobody, you know, held him accountable. And so the time came for us to move in together and the guy just like literally didn't know how to do anything, dishes, cleaning, like he didn't, he didn't even know what he didn't know. Right. And so there was a week wow. where I went away. So I, by the way, I was doing everything then. Right. I thought, okay. So you took, you took it all on yourself. I took it you all took, on myself. No I'll boundaries. share. You became... Yeah, exactly. I'll share and be the one who does everything. No boundaries. I just let everything in. Uh, right? That's not real sharing though. You was doing... not. And let me explain I mean, why. So in a week, <laughs> there was one week where I left, right, LA. And we had friends coming over, people always coming through. And like the week I was gone, the place just like fell apart without me because he didn't know what to do, yeah. right? Like he had never done it. I had always done it for him. So now I come back a week later and people are just like, they don't even like this guy anymore. Like his reputation just took a huge dive and people did like were – you know, taking a dump on him, basically, you know, saying like, oh, my God, he's such a mess. He's such a slob, this and that, blah, 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 because I didn't st like stop him and go, hey, man, let me teach you what you don't know. Let me push you to do the work of learning how to clean, you know, the apartment, how to clean up after yourself, what to order, what to get, how to put things away, you know, et cetera, so forth. And it ended up hurting him. And you, but you took the burden on yourself because you're like, I want my house to be clean yeah and he, he he's not gonna learn so i'll i'll do it for him and you'll say technically i'm giving to him because because i'm doing i'm cleaning up after him, i'm doing the dishes after him etc but the question is is that really giving is that really sharing does it does it help someone to do their dishes for months yeah it's a the good question no. it's, a, it's like you give, it's like you give someone a fish um they'll eat it but you know, but if you give him, if you teach him teach how him to fish, fish, he will have, a, you know, he will be able to feed himself. I feel like it's the same idea. But I can, I can relate with, with Momo because I know that to teach someone how to be clean and then hold them accountable takes more time than doing it yourself, which is so why you work. just want to just, so you just, work. it's double the work. But it, at the end of the day, it's double the work for a short period of time. But A, you're allowing that person to grow and you're really giving to him because I'm sure after washing the dishes, cleaning the house, sweeping, it builds resentment. You get upset at the person and giving should not, real sharing should not lead to resentment. Also, it, it would have been more sharing because the true work, right? The easy work, so to speak, was me doing it myself. The tough work, right, of actually sharing, not just like, giving right i was just giving him the freedom to not have to do it but sharing would have been let me teach you how to do it right it's harder for me so you know it's like actually me sharing it wasn't easy it was patience it's time it's repetition you know like just have to go back i have to think outside of myself like oh man i wonder if he remembers to do a b and c let me go remind him right so it was just that that much more work would have been true sharing, which later down the line happened. But at the beginning, it did took not. some time. And it, it took. Yeah. And it was bad. And I'm sure we and started I'm to sure. fight. We started to like really get on each other's nerves. And yeah, it was just not a great situation. It's, it's, it's one of the one of the most important indicators of a, of a sharing relationship going wrong, or let's say a giving relationship going wrong, is build of, a buildup of resentment. When you start to resent the other person, you know that you're not sharing with them. If you if a friend comes over and stays over, or and you're the, like, oh yeah, stay with me for three weeks, and then all of a sudden the person starts making a mess, and you start resenting him, you're not sharing your house with him anymore. You're 
it does, yeah. it's not going to end well. And that's where the boundary needs to be set. If you're going to stay here, you have to make your bed before you leave, et cetera. Those are actually sharing with them the opportunity to, to step up to the plate. Yeah. Just to clarify with that, the resentment could be on both ends. And a lot of the times a person will resent you if you're not saying no and putting up boundaries. When you give a person too much, it's this wow. weird thing. You don't understand it. I experienced it. You don't understand how this works but you give everything of yourself and they resent you for it, yeah. right? It doesn't make sense, but it's they because you're going. over, you're over giving. There's no boundary to turn it into sharing, right? And then it becomes resentment on their end or it becomes resentment on my end also because I'm constantly giving, giving, giving without like a boundary to say no. And I go, man, they're just sucking everything out of me. They're a drain on my time and resources, et cetera. Well, so then they take it for granted. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. Super exactly. important. Yeah. Mike, what were you saying? That, that basically from you sh oversharing, that person takes it for granted. All yeah. Your and that, and that, and that ultimately is a lose-lose for everybody. It's a lose yeah. for you. It's a lose for them. They don't feel like you care about them. You feel like you have triple the work on your plate. So sometimes, and I'm sure many of us have this with, with our friends, and, and just to look in our life where we feel that resentment, sometimes it's powerful to say no and to allow them to go through the process on their own, to grow up, to learn how to cook, to learn how to you know do, make decisions on their own, as opposed to you supporting people and coasting, saying that I'm giving them. So Mike, really quickly, I know you had a, a story that you wanted to share, and then we're going to end off with some tools on how to make sure that we're not in the giving or taking mentality and really coming from a place of sharing. Yeah. So um, I think I have a little story that kind of tells my part of one time that I said no, because I think saying no is a very big part of sharing, uh, especially when you have an agenda for it, a positive one. Um, so I remember like, I think it was like the 11th grade. I think I was like 17 at the, at the time, maybe 16. Um, but I had this really big test that basically, you know, if you get a good grade, it's more likely that you'll be accepted at college. Um, here in Mexico. The SATs? Is a, here, that's the thing. I'm in Mexico. I was Mexico oh, okay. at the time. So there's no SATs and none of that. There's just like these kind of random tests you do. The equivalent. The equi that. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. All right. Sorry. Didn't mean right. to interrupt. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there was this test and I mean, most, most of my friends were just like, ah, you know, like it's a BS test and just like, there's no point to learn for it anyway. So they didn't really care about it. Um, and I think it was like, and in the beginning, you know, when I first like, you know, got the material, I heard that the test is going to happen in the beginning, I kind of slacked off. Uh, you know, I was just playing most of the time, like video games, just wasting time, not putting any energy or focus in learning for the test. Um, but then I really sat with myself and I really I was like, you know, it's important for me um, to get a good grade on the test. It's important for me, you know, to eventually help me go into a new college and to succeed. So I'm going to work hard and I'm going to do it. Um, and listen, like the, the two weeks I was learning for the test, like most of my friends were just like roasting me. Um, they were going out to clubs, going crazy. Um, and listen, that like, I respect that, you know, but I don't know, they were, the point is like, they were kind of like making fun of me and like taking for granted. Um, and then the test came, I passed it. All my friends failed it because they just did not give any energy to it. Um, and eventually now I'm in a college and thanks to that test, it was one of the things that pushed me uh, to get accepted. But I think in this, in this scenario, um, saying no to slacking off, saying no um, to you know, being lazy and not putting effort, eventually I, sh I shared with myself um, the opportunity that I have now. And I think that's a huge way uh, to deal with those kind of things. And at the end of the day, like you, need, you really need to question, you know, what's right for you and what you truly want. It's powerful. You put like an interesting spin on sharing because you like many people think sharing is externally, right? You think yeah, that no. I can only share with others. Yeah. You can share with yourself by making yeah. a good decision and setting respect for yourself by putting right. a boundary up and saying, saying no that to yourself. That's really powerful. You held it's essentially, you know, Momo held his roommate accountable. Rachel held uh, her her work, you know, her worker employee colleague accountable, and you held yourself accountable. But yeah. that's really where where no is 
is, is sharing, is when there's accountability on the other end of it. You're taking accountability for your part and you're allowing the other person to take accountability for theirs instead of just doing it all on your own, even though it might be easier or quicker or going out with your friends or letting that, yeah. you know, letting that colleague fail or letting that friend, you know, slip away. Taking accountability, saying no is a really powerful way to, to express yourself when it's done with intention and agenda, as we mentioned in episode two. So now to, to wrap it all up and to kind of like put it in a bow and give us something to take away, you know, for me, one of the most powerful ways to identify if it's giving, which is sometimes taking or sharing, is to ask myself, you know, what's my source? What's my source of fulfillment here? It's a symbol. I have an opportunity to share with a friend and give them advice. I have an opportunity to um, to clean up someone's uh, dishes. I have an opportunity to um, go out with friends when I need to study for a test, whatever that might be. What's my source? So if my source of doing the dishes is saying, I want someone to say, wow, thank you so much for doing the dishes. What a good roommate. Or I really want my house to be clean right now. And I don't have energy to go confront my roommate. So my source is going to be like my, my false sense of cleaning the house or me needing someone's approval that the, like we said in episode two, that our source is not the light anymore. Our source is comfort. Our source is my house being clean. Our source is the recognition or the admiration that we get for doing someone's dishes. Oftentimes, when we ask ourselves, what's our source of fulfillment here? Where is the light coming from? Is this my, do I, am I excited to do the dishes because this is an opportunity for me to reveal light, to connect to the creator? Or is this, I'm looking for something in return from this person. And maybe now I should just, you know, allow the situation to take place and not grab energy or admiration from this person. So for me, that's a very powerful tool. And just by asking myself simply, there's an opportunity to share. What's my source? Do I see this as an opportunity to reveal my greatness? Or do I see this as an opportunity to take energy from someone because they're going to love me for it or, you know, care about me more or see that I'm a superhero, Momo? Sorry for calling you out again, but yeah. So th th that's Good just a, a, a tool that I use whenever I'm trying to distinguish whether it's taking, giving, or, or sharing. Does anybody else have a tool before we wrap up? I think I wanting, I just, I just want to like, just yeah. drop it. Like um, wanting to succeed, wanting, you know, a bright future and working hard for it is sharing. When you choose to do the right thing and maybe, you know, like, might sound cheesy or corny but that's the truth you know i feel like that's really real you know working hard for your dreams you know pushing um you know boundaries for achieving you know what you want in life that's sharing with yourself and i think that's something to to strive for and to work hard for. and and ultimately will allow you to share with others so let's say you've exactly. said no to that test you got into university, yeah. you create a, a, a clothing company, and now other people are wearing your clothing. Becoming the best you benefits the world as well. Exactly, exactly, 100%. On a similar note, my tool, I actually got this from a roommate of mine, uh, a friend and Hopefully mentor. not the- Not the, the one, no, yeah. no. <laughs> different guy, different guy. Good. But basically throughout all of my uh, different stories of challenges, I realized what I was seeking was like to not disappoint other people, right? I wanted to be the good guy. I wanted to be the, you know, the hero. And so that was kind of, you know, when you're trying not to disappoint everybody, you end up disappointing yourself and everything just falls apart. So he gave me this one phrase that I use. I say it every single day and it goes, disappoint as much, sorry, my life's purpose is to disappoint as many people as it takes for me to be happy, right? Which now takes it from, Oh, I need to please everybody else to know I need to do what is like the best for myself and for the other person. What, how do I get a win-win situation out of every single interaction? And so that's how I do it. I stop focusing on, are they going to be disappointed in the moment? You know, will they like it? It's not about that. It's, is this real sharing? Like David said, what's the source? If the source is light and love and care in the moment, we're all going to walk out feeling better at the end of the day. Right. In the moment, it might they might not feel great about it. But, you know, long term, Rachel's coworker won't get fired. My friend, my roommate won't have people thinking that they're like, you know, that they don't know what how to take care of themselves or the apartment. Michael will pass his test. Right. Because you come from a place of what's best for me, what's best for us. How do we win win this? That's amazing. That's, that's really powerful. 
Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And I just want to just want to kind of like put it out there that all of us are different, right? I know Momo happens to be Aries, but he's also a little bit Pisces. So he is very giving in nature. And sometimes for someone that's over giving in nature, you know, making sure not to disappoint somebody can be an agenda. It's like I, the goal is to not disappoint is actually you're taking, you're not really giving. So for that kind of, you know, person for him, you know, sharing would be, you know, don't disappoint people, become the greatest me, and then everybody else will follow as a result. For some people, it might be all I think about every morning is how I can take and how I can get and how I can receive. And in that moment, you know, maybe it's an opportunity for you to go out and and, and share with someone proactively. We, we put a very different spin on sharing in these groups, but ultimately what you want to realize is that sharing is an opportunity for you to plug in. If there's a homeless person on the street, you're not giving them the dollar because you're God and they're the vessel. You're giving them the dollar because this person is in your life right now. He gave you an opportunity to be like the creator and become the best you. Same thing with the dishes. Same thing with the, with the answering no to someone. These are opportunities for you to connect and to plug in. And when you realize that, you're not looking for anything from them because all you're looking for is to be plugged in, to be connected, and like Mike said, to be the best you. So hopefully this, this episode, this discussion about giving and sharing puts some clarity in your life about where in your life you want to make it more of an effort to give, more of an effort to share, more of an effort to see it as an opportunity as opposed to looking for something in return and where you might be able to start setting up some boundaries so that you can allow the other people in life to step up and that you can allow yourself to not necessarily need their attention or love or admiration. So I want to thank Rachel, Momo, and Mike so much for all of your wisdom, your stories, sharing, being vulnerable, and we'll see you guys in a future episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. Take care. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys.